Hi, this is Kevin of the Virtual Planetarium at Raritan Valley Community College. Welcome to our weekly Star Talk. Today we're going to be talking about a few summertime constellations that are smaller, so we usually don't hear about them as often. But before we talk about that, let's talk about our moon phases. We have a full moon on July 24th. We have last quarter moon on July 31st. And then the next new moon is going to be around August 7th. Now, like I said, today we're going to be talking about four smaller constellations that we don't normally talk about. Um, usually when we talk about summertime constellations, we talk about the brighter and the bigger constellations because those are the easier ones to find. But today we're going to dedicate some time to the smaller ones because even though we can't find them as easily, they are still up in the sky and they are still part of the summer sky. So the first constellation we're going to talk about is one called Fulpecula. This one is right here in the middle of our view. We have the sky set up for about 10 o'clock at night and we're looking towards the east. And Volpecula is a very small constellation. This picture right here is actually pretty misleading. Uh, Volpecula is really only just two stars in a line right here in the middle of our view. Um, so again, it's not that easy to find. But an easier way to locate where this constellation is in the sky is to remember that it's right in the middle of the Summer Triangle. So if you remember from a few videos ago, we talked about the Summer Triangle. If you don't haven't seen that video, I'm going to put the link for that in the description. But the Summer Triangle is made up of, four, of three very bright stars that each belong to a different constellation. Deneb up here belongs to Cygnus the Swan, Vega belongs to Lyra the Harp, and then Altair belongs to Aquila the Eagle. And Volpecula right here is right in the middle of the Summer Triangle. So that's how you can find these very three dim stars in the sky. Now, cool thing about this constellation is that if you have a telescope, you can point it to something called the Dumbbell Nebula. This is a cute little hidden treasure. It is a planetary nebula, much like the Ring Nebula, which we talked about in the constellation of Lyra. So again, if you have a telescope, you can hunt for that in the constellation of Volpecula. Now, the next constellation we're going to talk about is called Sagitta. Um, this constellation is actually just below Volpecula, so it's a little hard to see and a little too close, so we're going to get rid of the artwork for this. And we're actually going to zoom into the sky a little more now that we know where we're looking. Now, Sagitta right here is an arrow in the sky. Um, Greek mythology goes that this is the arrow that Hercules used to kill the eagle. Um, so that's why it's up in the sky next to the constellation of Aquila the Eagle, which is pretty cool. Now, this constellation is even smaller than Volpecula. It's actually the third smallest constellation in the sky, but it's actually a little easier to find. And that is because it has a pretty particular shape. If we get rid of the artwork and we see the lines right here, we can tell that the constellation is just the line of stars, but then it splits up into two stars. And that kind of does look like an arrow. I like to think of the two uh, stars branching off as the feathers of the arrow. So right now the artwork is a little backwards, but that's okay. It is still a little easier to find in the real sky. Now just below this constellation, we have the easiest constellation that we're going to talk about today. It's the easiest one to find. Um, it's one of my favorite constellations. It's this little group of stars right here that kind of looks like a kite. Um, it has this little small diamond shape in the sky and then the tail branching off of it. And this is the constellation of Delphinus the Dolphin. And I like this constellation because it's pretty easy to find because of its shape and it's just a cute little thing in the sky so it's this cute little dolphin up in the sky now in greek mythology this constellation right here the dolphin is the dolphin that helped poseidon persuade his wife into marrying him so poseidon as a show of gratitude put the dolphin up in the sky or so the story goes and then just below the constellation of Delphinus, we have the fourth constellation we're going to talk about today, and the smallest of the four. This is a constellation called Equileus, also known as the Little Horse, and this is actually the second smallest constellation in the whole sky, and it is definitely the harder of the four to find. The constellation itself only takes up about this small area of the sky, so that's why it's easy to see it's the second smallest. The smallest constellation is the constellation of Crux in the southern sky. We can't see that from here in New Jersey. Um, but a fun thing about this constellation is that it's actually right next to the constellation of Pegasus, which is a bigger horse. Um, it's the winged horse from Greek mythology. 
Um, Pegasus is a fall constellation though, so we won't be talking about it for a few more videos, but it is fun to note that the little horse is right next to the big horse in the sky. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Hope you learned something new. I know these constellations are very hard to find, but you should at least try to go outside and find Delphinas just below the Summer Triangle. Again, hope you learned something new, and thank you for joining us, and hope you have a great week.